In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the tips for honoring third year rotations that I think that oftentimes are very simple, but we, we overlook. I think that the first thing that I will say is being strategic with your schedule is actually very important. I think that after we finish second year and we finish step one, we go into third year thinking that everything is going to be more or less set in stone, that you have to know a lot of information, you have to be very prepared for your rotations, and that's kind of the, the key to success is really just knowledge-based. But I think that there, there's a lot more that goes into it that we oftentimes overlook. And the one thing is in your schedule. I think that oftentimes we think that the schedule doesn't really matter, but something as simple as when you schedule each of the rotations is very important. For example, if you took a student A who took their surgery rotation as their second rotation, and before that they took, let's say, ob or pediatrics, and then we take a second student, student B, who is also in their rotation for surgery in their second rotation. But before that, they took something like psychiatry. I think that if you compare the two people, and let's say all things being equal, the person A is going to have a much easier time with the rotation than person B because they had rotations before that that were somewhat similar. You go on rounds, you pre-round, you round on these patients, you know how to give a more or less give a presentation. And so your surgery rotation is going to feel a little bit more comfortable. Whereas someone who goes in from their psychiatry rotation and then goes into surgery is going to be very different, just very different ways of thinking. And I think that something as simple as that is planning your rotation so that you do things to prepare so that you're not just front loading, that you're not just signing up for, let's say, the biggest rotations first and you don't have anything to prepare going further. And also what rotations do you do before the big ones are also very important. I think that the other thing to be said is that especially, and I'll talk about this in a little bit about uh, the medicine and the surgery shelves, doing your surgery rotation after your medicine rotation is actually very important as well because if you've taken the surgery shelf, you'll realize that it's more or less just a medicine shelf. It's a medicine shelf with surgical patients. So if you have a, a person who has already taken their medicine rotation and now is taking surgery, they're going to do really well on their surgery rotation, especially if the shelf is, is heavily weighted, just because the surgery shelf is very similar to the, the medicine shelf. So it's almost like you study twice. I think that the second thing that you said is that picking, uh, say, say you wanted to do internal medicine as your chosen specialty. It's probably not the best idea to do it first. It's also probably not the best idea to do it last. It's not good to do it first because these are people that you oftentimes want to get letters of rec from, and it's not just the, the grade that you're looking for. You want to be able to meet the right people, to be able to impress the right people. So if you do it first, chances are you're not going to be as good as if you did it a little bit later on. If you did it as your very last rotation, the only downside of that is if you did it last and now you don't like it, um, then you're kind of stuck. You're kind of stuck figuring out what exactly you're going to do with the rest of your life. And then the last thing is, you may think that all the different rotations are the same and the different sites are the same. And if you have a, no choice, then there's really no point in this last point. But a lot of schools, they give you a choice. They give you a choice of where do you want to do your rotations. You, give, you put in preferences. And I think that it's very important to check these reviews on these different sites if that's uh, an option for you and see what other people have to say. Search in sites, you'll find that are much more difficult to get honors. Certain sites are much easier to get honors. Uh, what I've found is that places that are more academic versus community programs, the academic programs, the academic uh, rotation sites, you're going to have a much easier time getting honors in a rotation than a community site, just because a lot of times the community sites, they don't understand what exactly the, the evaluation system is, and uh, an outstanding may not be the same thing as at an academic site. Um, and I think that that just varies by institution, so definitely look into that and see which sites are going to be the best for your specific rotation. I think that the second thing that I can think of for a, a tip on how to do well in your rotations is really figure out what is important? How are you being graded? I think that the biggest variation between schools is going to be what are your grades largely consistent of? Some schools may say 90% of your grade is going to be based on your evaluations. And then other places may say 90% of your grade may be based off your shelf. So depending on 
what the the school is and also each rotation may be different within that school so a surgeon rotation for example at my school the surgery sh- shelf was worth significantly higher than our evaluation scores whereas in in something like medicine our evaluations were worth much more than our actual shelf and so you kind of have to vary what you spend the most time on i'm not saying that you're going to exclude your actual rotations your evaluations if they're only worth 10 percent. but what i am saying is that if your shelf is worth 90 percent, you better focus a lot of attention to doing well on your shelf just putting that extra effort, I think, is what's most important. And then the other thing is going to be your resident versus your attending evaluations. What is going to be valued more or what is, are they valued equally? And I think that this is important just in the way that you, you think. And I think that it's very easy going, on, going in very early on thinking, well, I'm just going to do my best effort with everybody that I meet. But what you'll find is that oftentimes you may not have had the best impression with a certain resident or you may not have had the best impression with a certain attending. And it may weigh you down. It may weigh you down significantly and, and kind of skews the way you uh, approach the rest of your rotation. So I think that it's very important to really realize, well, maybe you didn't have the best evaluation or the best interaction with the search and resin, but in actuality, that part of your grade is, is very small in the grand scheme of things and vice versa. And then the next one is to be useful. And I think it's a lot easier said than done that being useful is surprisingly a difficult uh, task to, to do. And I think that some of the ways that you can be useful, and especially to be useful in, in, in front of your, your residents, be in front of your attendings, is I think the simplest thing is just is just talking to your patients and, and spending time with the family. I think that as interns, as residents, it's often very easy to avoid doing this. Avoid doing this not because they don't want to, but just because they don't have time. And this is one way that you can really be useful on your rotations as a, as a third year as, as well as a, a fourth year medical student is just taking the time to, to do things that other people may not have had the time to do. So for example, if there was some type of decision or some type of news that the family needed to, to know about or should know about, I think that it'd be useful to at least ask your the rest of your team, would it be helpful if I went to go tell the family about this this new update or whatever it may be. I think that it's oftentimes as a third year, you're not entirely sure what you should and shouldn't share. And oftentimes it could be much worse if you shared a piece of information that you probably shouldn't have. So it's always best to talk to the rest of your team, but just show that you're trying to be as helpful as possible. I think oftentimes as third years, the only thing that you really find that you're doing is writing a note. And and oftentimes these notes don't even count for anything. So you'll, you'll go on your pre-round You'll give your rounds, and then the intern will give their own presentation after you have given your presentation. Then you go and write your note, and then the intern will write a note right after you. And so you'll find that you don't really feel very useful. So what you want to do is try to do all the other tasks, tedious tasks or procedures or whatever it may be, and write your note beforehand. Write your note either the night before or that same night so that you're not just writing a note as the, ent- as the only thing that you've done the entire day. I think it's often very easy to think the only thing I did all day as a third-year medical student was write a note. Everything else was pretty much absolutely useless. So I think that if you can get that out of the way, and oftentimes writing a note takes a very long period of time, especially when you're just starting off, trying to get as much of the bulk out of the way early on so that the rest of the day you're as useful as possible and as open so you're not just saying, oh, well, actually, I can't help you with that because I, I have to write my note. And obviously you wouldn't say it in that regard, but they'll kind of get the sense if, if you still have a lot of work to do and a lot of the work is just in writing a note, then that could be uh, one way that you wouldn't be very useful. So that that's that's one thing to, to think about, one, one strategy, just because when you write these, when you pre-write these notes, oftentimes, not much has changed. Not much has changed really from the night before to the next day. And you would just change the information that has uh, adjusted overnight. And I think that's one way to be pretty efficient. I think that the next thing that I can think of is really the way that you're evaluated is oftentimes in your appearance, your appearance of how how much you know, not just about the subject, but also how much you know about your patients. And I think that Sometimes it's very difficult. It's very difficult to be able to control what you're going to be asked, what you, what the information that you know, because there's only so much that you can know about 
all the disease states. But I think the one thing that you can be very sure of is they will always ask you questions about your patients. And I think that these, these are things that you can always have the right answer to. You may not have the answer to every single patient on your entire team, which is oftentimes what you're getting pimped on. But at least knowing your patients very well, not only in their diseases, not only their medications, but also very simple things such as their actual history, their family history, all of the names of their family members um, and the phone numbers. I think that those are all things that are very important that as interns and as residents, um, oftentimes they, they overlook or they, they don't necessarily have the answer to because they have 10 different patients that they're taking care of. So if the attending or the resident were to ask, oh yeah, what's, what's that... Um, What's so-and-so patients, who's the, the, the mother who's always in, in the room with them? And then you have the answer of who they are or, or what their name is, what their relationship is to the patient. I think that it, it shows a lot of proactiveness and that you're really taking care of the patient. and you, you know the family well. Very simple things can go a, a long way. So I think this next one is really important that you want to have the right motivations for everything that you do. It's very obvious when someone's just trying to so-called gun the rest of the team or want to be overly aggressive or do things with the, the wrong motivations. I think that as long as you have the right motives and you have the right goals of putting the patient first, wanting to learn as much as you can, wanting to be as useful and as helpful as you can, that no matter what you do, it will be with good intentions and it will, it will show. It will show. But if you don't, if you have these very poor motives and just looking out for yourself, it's very obvious. I think all the interns, all the residents and attendings, they, they can tell when someone's not being genuine. So I think that when people are very aggressive or when they steal other people's cases or when they're only trying to teach someone or educate someone when someone's looking or to get credit, I think those are poor motives. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't get credit for the work that you've done, but you shouldn't only try to do things in order to get credit. And it's, it's, it's much simpler than people think, and it's very obvious when people have poor intentions. So don't be aggressive, don't be fake, but just be genuinely curious and wanting to learn and ask a lot of questions. I think that's probably the most important part of trying to distinguish someone who's genuinely curious and someone who's just trying to be a gunner. I think this last tip is probably going to be the most important uh, because really how you evaluate, specifically in third year, I'm not really referring to fourth year and beyond, but during your third year evaluations, what you're going to be evaluated probably the, the most is going to be during rounds, depending on the rotation, of course, but especially during your medicine and your ob and your pediatrics, all of these rotations, and, and especially neurology, you're not really doing too much in addition besides just doing rounds. That's really where you're going to be evaluated the most. And really, they can pimp you as much as they want, but really what they're gathering the most information from is, is your presentation. How confident are you? How knowledgeable are you? And really just how much do you know about the disease? How much do you know about your patients? So I think that number one thing is not everybody has all the knowledge in the world. Not everybody is just ha knows all the facts and, and can't answer all the questions correctly. You can try your best and you should try your best. But the one thing that you can do to really give yourself the biggest advantage is really just to practice your presentations. I think that the one thing people forget is that no one's going to know whether or not you spent five minutes or five hours to practice your, your presentation beforehand. Someone who has rehearsed and practiced the rotation, as long as it doesn't sound too rehearsed and too forced is going to sound a lot better. It's going to know the, the, the flow and going to know exactly what to say next. It's going to sound much more fluent and, and fluid with their presentation. So I think one is being really when you can, especially on these rotations when you're giving presentations the next day, to really just practice beforehand. Practice in the shower, practice on the, the drive over practice the night before, prepare everything that you're going to say the night before, especially early on, is going to help a lot. And then the second thing is really just sticking to a script. Everybody likes a certain script, whether or not you're on medicine, there's going to be a certain script, whether or not you're on pediatrics and neurology, there's a certain script that you have to follow. And really nobody wants to deviate from that unless you're uh, very fluid and, and very easy to follow. But when we're first starting off, it's, it's not that easy. It's not that easy to, to sound fluid when you're jumping all over the place and not going in the order that is really the convention. So I think that especially when you're early on, you have to stick to a script, you have to stick to a template. And however it is that you do that, 
is going to be up to you, whether or not there's a certain script that you guys all use at your school that you print out every single day and, and fill that out the night before or during the morning or whatever it may be and, and practice your presentation, that's fine. But if you want a more formalized script that someone has already developed for you, we have one for you, which is in a book, which is an h and notebook where really you can focus on what's most important and just fill out the information that this template has and that when you're giving your presentation you're not reading off of it but you have a much more regimen way of thinking a much more regimen way of um, giving your presentation so pick what works for you and just stick with that whether or not it's going to be something like this notebook or whether or not it's going to be something like the the facebook group that you guys all have that has a certain template that everybody uses just go with that find what works for you and stick with it be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.